Hello and welcome to the fourth lesson of our module on Avestan. Today we are going to discuss the written transmission of the Avesta and in particular the different types of extant manuscripts. The oldest manuscript containing an Avestan text, however, is not written in the Avestan script but in the Sogdian script. This is a unique witness testifying to the wide use of the Avestan texts all over Iran. This manuscript predates our extant Avestan manuscript by more than 400 years and testifies to Avestan being written in another script than the Avestan script. We shall look at the Sogdi and Ashemvohu again when we talk about the dialectal features of Avestan in the session on phonology. In the last session, we saw how the Zoroastrian priests created the Avestan script artificially. In doing so, they borrowed letters from existing scripts, in particular the Pahlavi book script, the Psalter script and the Greek alphabet, and they created new letters by adding diacritic marks to existing ones. Once the script was created, they must have started to use it for writing Avestan. They could of course have written, have used it for writing any text and this would in all probability have included the rituals. The manuscripts that survive to the present day are of two types. They either offer the Avestan recitation text as uh, accompanied uh, by the ritual instructions in Pahlavi or Gujarati and this type of manuscripts are usually referred to as liturgical manuscripts. Of the other, the other group offer the Avestan text accompanied by a translation in Pahlavi or in Sanskrit and these manuscripts are usually referred to as exegetical. The liturgical manuscripts have the Avestan text only and are therefore called Sade or pure, which is Avestan, which is Pahli Persian. They provide the text to be recited in the rituals. The instructions in Pahlavi or Gujarati state which priest has to recite a particular text and they describe the actions to be performed during the recitation. The ritual instructions are often written in red ink, which makes them stand out more. And uh, so here in this uh, example, you have the uh, ritual instructions here written in red ink, while the Avestan recitation text is written in black ink. And the ritual instructions here are in Pahlavi. So these manuscripts give us full descriptions of the ceremonies, both in terms of the text to be recited and of the actions to be performed. The liturgical manuscripts fall into two major groups, Iranian and Indian. The I manuscripts of the Iranian group were written in Iran or they are copies of manuscripts written in Iran and copied in India. Manuscripts of the Indian branch were copied in India from Indian originals. Ultimately, however, the Indian religion derives from the Iranian tradition. The exegetical manuscripts testify to the learned tradition of the priestly interpretation of the Avesta rather than to the tradition of the liturgical practice of the rituals. They usually include no ritual instructions. Instead, they give the Avestan text alternating with the Pahlavi or the Sanskrit translation. So here this manuscript uh, is the Sanskrit Yasna, a picture of the Sanskrit Yasna manuscript S1, which offers the Avestan text alternating with its Sanskrit translation. And here the Avestan text is in, written in red ink and the, the Sanskrit translation is also written uh, in black ink and the Sanskrit translation is also written in black ink. So here 
you have uh, some a western text this one here is a western text and uh, it's followed by sanskrit text now a western is written from right to left and sanskrit is written from left to right so what the scribes did who copied this manuscript who wrote these manuscripts when they had come to the end of a western section they just turned the manuscript upside down and then continued writing the sanskrit text from left to right and once they had reached the end of the section so here this is the sanskrit text then and once they had reached the end of it they turned the manuscript again upside down and then they continued here writing a uh, our western texts from right to left then they turned the manuscript again upside down and they wrote the sanskrit text from left to right and so on so when you read such a manuscript you also have to turn the manuscript upside down or flip your image upside down we thus have here po short portions of a western text alternating with short portion of the Sanskrit text and often the Sanskrit text or the Pahlavi translation text is followed by a commentary. So this is the exegetical tradition of the Avesta. Some of the oldest extant Avestan manuscripts belong to this group of the exegetical Avesta. These manuscripts were copied by a priest called Mihraban Kaihusrov. Mihraban was actually uh, was a priest from Sistan, which is um, the land here marked on our map in Iran. And he was invited to come to India um, to copy manuscripts and to teach Zoroastrian priests in India of uh, the Zoroastrian tradition. Um, the person who invited him was Chahil, the son of Sangan, who was a wealthy Parsi merchant of Kambai in Gujarat here. So he invited uh, Mihraban Kai Husraf to come over to India and there in India Mihraban copied manuscripts and the manuscripts our Western manuscripts which have survived of Mihraban are all bilingual manuscripts, so belonging to the exegetical tradition. Among the manuscripts um, copied by Mihraban are two manuscripts of the Yasna, and it's the Avestan text with its Pahlavi translation. And uh, these are the manuscripts J2 in the Bodleian Library, Oxford, and the manuscript K5 in the Royal Library of Copenhagen. Both of these manuscripts are dated uh, to 1323. Here you have an image of the manuscript J2 and again we have the Avestan text here which is for, uh, alternating with the Pahlavi translation. And uh, the translation just follows uh, the Pahlavi text, the Avestan text, um, oft sometimes marked by little interpunction signs as here at the end um, of, a, of a section when we have the language change. From Mihraban, we also have two manuscripts of the 22 Fargards of the Videvdad with its Pahlavi translation. And these are the manuscripts L4, also dated 1323, of the British Library in London, and the manuscript K1, dated 1324 of the Christian era, in the Royal Library of Copenhagen. The picture here shows a page of the manuscript uh, K1, you see the handwriting is uh, very similar, the same actually, um, as that of the Sanskrit Yasna, which you just saw. These four manuscripts are kept in European libraries and they were easily accessible, or relatively easily accessible, to Niels Ludwig Westergaard and later to Karl Friedrich Geltner when these two scholars were preparing their editions of the Avesta. 
since these manuscripts were not only accessible but also very old, the two scholars gave precedence to them over other manuscripts, in particular over the liturgical manuscripts. In their editions, the Avestan text of the Visperet, the Videvdat and the Vistasbjerg is presented as it appears in these bilingual manuscripts by simply omitting the Pahlavi translation. But the way these texts are used in the rituals does not at all emerge from Westergaard and Geldner's editions. Moreover, the ritual directions are barely, if at all, recorded. Apart from other shortcomings of Geldner's editions, Geldner had access to only few, although important, manuscripts of the Iranian ritual tradition. Many more Iranian manuscripts have come to light in recent years and the time is now ripe for new editions which take the ritual performance into account. Teams in London and Berlin are currently working under the umbrella of the Corpus Avesticum on editions of the Yasna and the so-called Long Liturgy respectively, aiming at representing the rituals as they are performed. So this was the last video in the introductory section on the Avestan language. I hope you enjoyed it and I'm inviting you to join us in the next section on phonology.